Hi, my name is Jerry Bartles, Civil Technical Specialist with Autodesk. The purpose of today's presentation is to demonstrate how Civil 3D can be used for the split curb methodology of roadway design, where essentially the engineer is going to be designing leveraging the top backs of curbs. This is a methodology that is uh, used in a number of states across the country, which is the catalyst of today's presentation. So let's begin. What I'm starting with is a centerline alignment called Main Street. I've got an existing ground surface and using both of those pieces of information I've created an existing ground profile as well as the design information for my proposed ground or my proposed centerline for my roadway. Now if I'm going to design using the backs of curbs I'm going to need to create some offset alignments to represent the backs of curbs. So let's make the assumption I'm going to do a 12 foot lane on either side of the center line as well as a 2 foot curb so my back of curbs would be 14 foot to the right and left of my center line. So we'll create those quickly by grabbing the alignment creating offset alignments one to the left one to the right in each case both 14 feet and I'm going to set my styles to offset and maybe no labels because labels won't be necessary for those. Because these are offset alignments, if the intent is that my left and right back of curb always remain parallel to the center line, offset alignments are a great choice because as you update the alignment geometry, the offsets will update automatically. Okay, next thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need my typical cross section or my, my assembly that is going to provide the design information uh, for me to leverage the split curb or design from the backs of curbs. So let's create a assembly. We'll give it the name split curb and we'll add that into this viewport in the corner. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start connecting up some sub-assemblies to that. The first one is a link offset and slope. What that is going to do for me is it's going to provide a point within the assembly that I can connect my curbs to for my design. Now as we discussed before that top back of curb is going to be 14 foot away from the center line with a 0% slope. That will create the one for the right. We'll do a negative one that will create the one for the left. Next thing we'll do is we'll connect our curbs. I'm going to use an urban curb and gutter general. That is a two foot curb. Rather than connecting by the gutter edge, we're going to connect off the back of curb. And as I create this, my left and rights are going to be a little bit backwards because I'm actually working out and then working my way back in, which means the right will snap to this side and the left will snap to the other. So even though it's inverted, the design will still function quite nicely. It's just as we create the assembly, it'll be a little bit different than what we're accustomed to. Let's go ahead and create our lanes next. The lane I'm going to work with is the lane towards crown subassembly. That's going to provide a mechanism that I can connect to the curb as well as have it connect back to the center line and the pavement for the other side. So uh, 12 foot is fine. Let's go ahead and connect that. That is going to connect up on this side. We'll those are inverted as well with my rights and lefts and my pavement is in. Now having done this, uh, don't worry about the fact that the pavement slopes down. That will all be corrected at the point that we create our corridor and elevations are applied to the different design components within our assembly. Now there is one thing that I will still do is we will associate some logical names with these to make them a little easier to identify when we build the corridor. So I'm going to add the right and left distinction to, uh, to each one of these such that um, when we see it in the listing later it'll be easier to identify which side these are on when we tie the values together with respect to the elevation and offsets. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the left side here. Left side and the left side for the lane towards crown. All right. Having done so, we've got our horizontal information for our curbs. We've got our design assembly put together. We just need some vertical information now for the curb lines. We're going to create those based off the center line. We'll go into the geometry editor using our proposed profile and I'm going to create a copy of that profile. Just using the defaults for right now, we'll actually create two. One for the left, one for the right. This way my left and right design for my curbs can be independent of each other. Let's go ahead and come down, give those some logical names rather than just the layout uh, came in by default. We'll associate the properties for the first one here. We'll be right, top, back of curb, 
and we'll associate a style such that's unique from the center line. We'll do the same thing for the other side. That will be left, top, back of curb. That will be on the left side, always paying close attention to spelling. Okay, with those created, they are at the same elevation as the center line. Uh, or proposed profile, so let's adjust that. Because I know the elevational difference between the top back of curb and the edge of pavement, as well as the width of the lane, I've computed that by uh, adjusting my right top back of curb and left top back of curb such that they are 0.233 higher than the center line of my proposed, the, um, I should have a 2% pavement slope. So let's go ahead and make an adjustment. We'll select this. It grabs the top left, top left back of curb. I can see that in my contextual menu. We will raise that up 0.233. With that one adjusted, we'll grab the next one, right back of curb. Very nice thing about the contextual menus is when we select an object within Sybil 3D, the name of the object is included at the top of the screen. Those have been updated. Let's go ahead and build our corridor model. So we're going to create a simple corridor. It's going to be based off the center line of the road, the proposed center line, as well as our assembly. With the names we've included earlier, it's going to make it easier for us to connect up the information horizontally and vertically. So the right back of curb will be connected to my right alignment. The left back of curb will be connected to the left alignment. And the two lane towards crowns will both be connected to the center or my main street. Just the main alignment itself. That controls horizontally. Vertically, the right back of curb will be connected or get its vertical information from our right proposed profile. The left will get its information from the left back of curb proposed profile. And my crowns will get its information based off the proposed center line. All right, so a handful of things to fill in, but if we give them logical names, it makes it a very easy process and understandable thing to go through and do that. All right, my corridor model is created. Let's go ahead and select that. We will take a look at the section editor, and if we zoom up on that a little bit, maybe lock that display on the screen, you can see I've got two 2% 2 lanes. And if uh, my design is correct here, I should be able to set my corridors such that they rebuild automatic. And if we were to make a change maybe from the elevation for the left or the right. Let's go ahead and grab this guy. It's the left top back of curb. I can go into the geometry editor and I can make an adjustment of that. Let's raise it up um, half of what we did before, maybe to get a 1% slope lane. We'll adjust that. The corridor model updates and you see now that our left side has a 1% slope uh, where the right side is a 2% slope. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. So what that means is anywhere within our uh, roadway design, we could come in now and make adjustments independent of the left or right side of uh, pavement. I will grab this as being my uh, left side. I'm going to drop that down just so that it's easy to see. All right, the corridor updates uh, automatically. And if we take a quick look at that, we'll back up the, uh, the plan view side as well. Let's grab our corridor model. Let's take a quick look at that. The section editor. And if you recall, we made our change in here. If we zoom up and lock in on that display, we should be able to start arrowing through. And you'll notice the there's lines on the uh, plan view as well as the profile that are showing us exactly where we are because once again we're working with a model not with a uh, just lines and curves but you'll notice as we get down towards the point you'll see the left side curb now start to drop significantly lower at about a 4.3 percent as opposed to the two percent on the other side so we've effectively accomplished what we wanted to where we can do our design now based off of the back of curbs and have those independent of each other so, as you can see, using Civil 3D, we can easily design to the back of curb, which is the basis of the split curb methodology of roadway design. Um, before we close, I'd like to mention that this concept came from a colleague of mine, Mr. Steve Gonda, because I'd like to give credit where credit is due. And once again, my name is Jerry Bartles, Civil Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and that concludes today's presentation.